So how much do you all think you know about healthcare? In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, it often feels like we are surrounded by health-related information. As a teenager myself, I know that there are a lot of false health rumors spreading on social media, ranging from posts that claim drinking bleach cures COVID-19 to conspiracy theories it is clear that we need to have the ability to sort out accurate health information from the misconceptions. This skill is called health literacy. The CDC defines health literacy as the ability to find, understand, and use information and services related to healthcare. This means understanding the terms and conditions behind health insurance communicating effectively with healthcare providers, sorting out public health safety measures from advice given by unreliable sources, and knowing how to live a healthy lifestyle. Can you guess how many people have good health literacy? The results may surprise you. How about 75%, 50%, no, not even close. Only 12% of adults in the United States have good health literacy, according to the US Department of Health and Human Services. And the consequences of low health literacy are widespread. A 2020 United Health Group report found that increasing health literacy rates among counties in the United States would lead to approximately 993,000 fewer hospitalizations and over $26.4 billion in potential savings per year. With all of these benefits of improving our healthcare knowledge, it is necessary for us to find a solution to this overlooked issue. So first, let's diagnose the root cause of low health literacy. Next, let's examine the effects of this problem. And finally, let's come up with a treatment plan to educate ourselves about healthcare. I know many of us can relate to feeling like healthcare providers speak another language filled with medical terms. However, this also extends to health insurance terminology. I mean, who actually knows what a deductible is? In fact, according to a Forbes June 2021 article, even after COVID-19, two thirds of Americans can't correctly define health insurance premiums, co-payments, and deductibles. The same article found that 60, so let's start here today and define these terms. Healthcare.gov states that a health insurance premium is what you pay each month for health, for health care coverage. A deductible is the amount you have to pay for a covered health care service before your insurance company starts contributing. And a copayment is a fixed amount you have to pay for a covered health care service after you've paid your deductible. And it's not just the health insurance terminology that people are confused about. It's also the protections offered to them. The same article found that 60% of Americans don't know that the Affordable Care Act requires health plans to, to enroll people with pre-existing conditions. This knowledge gap could be the difference between getting health insurance and staying uninsured. If people don't know about the protections offered to them, they are unable to make informed decisions about healthcare costs. And the same article found that 25% of people don't seek medical care because they don't know if their insurance company will cover it. These patients may suffer worse health outcomes due to this unaddressed issue. 
This illustrates that low health literacy has detrimental consequences. Health literacy also relates to the ability to sort out health-related misinformation. Remember all of the crazy health hacks that were everywhere on social media claiming to cure COVID-19 or cleanse toxins from your body? You're not alone in scrolling past all of these misleading posts. A Pew Research survey found that 48% of Americans have seen COVID-19 related misinformation online. And the combination of low health literacy and the pervasiveness of misleading health guidance makes it harder to identify reliable public health sources. So let's start here today and ignore suspicious looking health hacks and avoid sharing them on social media. This will make it easier to identify reliable, accurate public health sources. And in the midst of so much misinformation, comprehending accurate health information is more important than ever. This brings us to another issue. Who is most affected by low health literacy and why? According to the CDC, racial and ethnic minorities, non-native speakers of English, those with low socioeconomic status, and medically underserved people are disproportionately susceptible. One study found that 74% of Spanish-speaking patients, for example, demonstrated below basic health literacy, the lowest level possible, compared to only 7% of English-speaking patients. Language and cultural barriers are preventing patients from understanding their healthcare decisions. As a result, health-related inequalities are exacerbated when patients are not presented with accessible healthcare information. Health literacy gaps are also influenced by health insurance companies and other healthcare-related organizations. The CDC defines organizational health literacy as how organizations and institutions are helping people make health decisions. Due to low health literacy, uh, healthcare providers should try to explain health decisions to the populations they serve. On the other hand, patients should feel comfortable asking for clarifications about treatment plans and other health topics. It is vitally important that we address this issue and make sure everyone understands their healthcare decisions and choices. After all, the benefits of improving health literacy are monumental. So you might be wondering, how do we do this again? First, let's increase our knowledge about health insurance terms. Don't hesitate to ask questions about the terms and conditions and health topics that you don't understand. Your health is at stake here. Next, let's avoid sharing health-related misinformation on social media. This will make it easier to identify accurate public health sources. And in the midst of so much misinformation, comprehending accurate health information is more important than ever. This is the treatment plan to improve health literacy. Thank you.